Today on Hands On Photography, there's a particular photography style that some people tend to confuse. So we're going to talk about long exposure versus light painting. Sound fairly similar, mm, sort of similar setup, but two totally different things. I'm going to break it down for you. This is Twit. Hey, what's going on, everybody? I am Matt Pruitt, and this is Hands on Photography here on Twit TV. Hope y'all are doing well. I am unbelievable as always. And on this week's episode, I want to talk to you folks about an interesting and sometimes controversial topic, or more like photography style, and it's long exposure versus light painting. Pretty much two different things, but a lot of people tend to confuse the two. We'll break that down momentarily, but before we get into that, I want to say welcome to the folks that are joining us for the very first time here on the show. Welcome to you. and Thank you for popping by. Go ahead and subscribe right now. Now that you're listening to it, just subscribe in whatever podcast application you're enjoying us on. We're available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and YouTube. So go ahead and subscribe to all of those spots and be sure to leave me a star rating and a comment and all of that good stuff to help push the show up in the wonderful world of podcast algorithms and help more folks discover this show. Thank you for all of the support. Or you can just check out the website for more subscription options as well as our different show notes. It's twit.tv slash hop. It's twit.tv slash H-O-P for hands-on photography. Again, thank you very much for your continued support of me and this show. All right. So now let's go ahead and get started with this week's episode. Uh, I wanted to talk about long exposure versus light painting because I got some feedback from you, the loyal hands on photography listeners. Thank you for that. You can always just shoot an email to hop at twit.tv if you got some questions and comments uh, or, or concerns or reviews that you'd like for me to do, just as my man, Mr. Benedict did here. So let me go ahead and pull up his uh, email on the screen and we'll get started with this discussion here. So let's see i hit this button and there we go email says hey aunt so i started following nick based on one of your episodes and came across this photo and i should probably put that photo on the screen right there we go if you look at nick's mentions it, he, he he plans to to light paint in air quotes um but ended up doing a long exposure instead. I am familiar with long exposure, but not sure what quote light painting would be or how to accomplish that. Any tips or tutorials on how to do this? Thanks, David Benedict. Yeah, so light painting versus long exposure. Two totally different things, and a lot of people can get those confused, but it's okay. That happens. Uh, I'm going to try to help you out with that today. Let's talk about long exposure. Let's talk about the exposure triangle. If you go all the way back to episode two, I believe it was episode two or episode three, where I discussed the exposure triangle, and in that exposure triangle you have what's called shutter speed in one of those corners so shutter speed is the actual mechanical apparatus on your camera or if you're on a smartphone this is simulated that opens up like so and closes every time you click the button on your camera okay so the speed of that that device or, or that shutter opening and closing is the shutter speed okay yeah i know that sounds obvious but the trick is the faster that shutter opens and closes, it's going to be less light coming in, but it's also going to freeze any action that you're having uh, framed up in your scene. OK, the, the, the slower that rate, you're going to start to slow down the shutter speed. So going from one one hundredth of a second to one twenty fifth of a second is a slower shutter speed. But you can take it even slower than that. You can take it down to having a shutter speed of one second or 10 seconds or five seconds or anything like that. So if this is a five second shutter speed, what's happening is the shutter is opening up, staying there for five seconds and then closing. Now, while it's open for five seconds, so much more light is coming into your image sensor. And there's if there's anything going on within the scene, 
it's going to blur it um, because it's because of the movement. Uh, it didn't freeze the motion because the shutter speed is just too it's just too slow for it. So if there's something moving around in there, you'll see it moving um, in your image because it'll have a bit of motion blur on it. That's an advantage and a disadvantage depending on your particular composition. Long exposure is usually used more so in a lower light scenario. OK, so if you're at a bar or something and you want to take a photograph of the group or your friends or what have you, you're probably not going to be able to shoot at one one hundredth of a second inside of a bar because most most bars are just they're not well lit. They, they're pretty dark in there. So you're going to have to slow that shutter speed down. You slow that shutter speed down to one one twenty fifth of a second, not one one twenty fifth, one twenty fifth of a second. And you get just a little bit more light coming in. But you're going to have to deal with people's faces getting blurred if they move around or anything like that. OK, so now let's step it up a little bit more. Let's say you're doing cityscapes, something that I love to do. I love to go out, uh, say, downtown San Francisco, Santa Rosa or Charlotte, wherever, and do cityscapes and take buildings, take pictures of the buildings at night as they're lit up. But it's dark outside. Uh, so I can't just snap something with a really fast shutter or my image is just going to come out totally black. Not good. Slowing that shutter down is going to let more ambient light in and it's going to allow the city to sort of just glow in the scene. But if I slow it down to something really slow, like five seconds, I'm going to get some very, very interesting effects from the lights. And if there's anything moving in the scene, such as I'm um, standing near a busy street where the cars are going up and down the street that night with their headlights on, it's going to create some cool light streaks because they're moving through my scene while the shutter is still open. And the image sensor is just collecting all of this light that's moving through it. And it's going to be a really, really cool effect. So that is long exposure. And what we have with Mr. Nick's scene here, this is a long exposure. And because he has the light streaks, he was essentially holding a torch or something here in this screen. Um, and this is Nick Blakely photography on Instagram. I follow him. I believe he's down in the um, Florida area and he's 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 pretty daggum talented. So give him a follow on Instagram. But anyway, he's holding like a torch in this scene and he's got a slow shutter going. So while he's holding that torch and the shutter is open, he's just moving the torch around in the scene. And when the shutter closes, it creates this image, basically a bunch of light streaks into the scene. Very easy effect to do. But if you look a little bit closer, look at look at the background. Look, I don't know if this is Mr. Nick here in the background or someone else, but the person in the back of the scene, they're a little bit blurred They're not as crispy and sharp as those light streaks are because the, sh the shutter is open for a couple seconds. He may have been moving just ever so slightly. Doesn't matter. It's going to pick him up uh, because it's a it's a slower shutter. More light is coming in and it, it's not freezing his action. So that's the that's the effect of, that of a long exposure. Now, light painting, light painting is slightly different, but huh, it's, it's it it's slightly different and somewhat of a challenge to pull off. It, it's gonna take some extra tools. When you're doing a light painting uh, photograph, you're gonna have a scene that's dark, just like you would in long exposure. You're going to have a longer shutter speed, a slower shutter speed, just like you would in long exposure. But you use a light source to paint the subject in your scene. You'll see this a lot of times if, if someone is doing like nighttime real estate photography that's not super popular but there are some people that are doing that for uh, certain marketing purposes if you will and what they'll do is they'll have just a few lights on set with them you know a, a few torches whether it be a, a large strobe that that they can use or just a very powerful flashlight it'll work just as well you set up your camera put it on a tripod Set your shutter speed to something fairly slow, like five seconds or 10 seconds or what have you. Lock the shot off, engage the shot. And while that shutter is open, you take your light source and you paint the subject. OK, 
from behind the camera. You don't want to really be in the scene, but you just paint light onto your subject at hand. And when the shutter closes, you don't get light streaks. You get your subject is it's just glowing. It has a bit of a glow effect on it because the light was captured on the subject and the sensor saw it. Pretty easy to do, um, but it, it will take a little bit of a learning curve every now and then because sometimes people will do light painting and find themselves in the scene or they'll miss spots with the painting of the light because uh, the shutter speed was a little too fast. So they'll miss getting some of the parts of the subject lit up. And it's easy to do. And it it, it just takes a little bit of time it told, to sort of nail down your timing on it. And uh, you'll be able to pull off some pretty interesting shots. My friend Susan Lord, she does a lot of light painting. And if I can find her Instagram handle, I'll put it up on the screen. I can never remember people's handles anymore. <laughs> I guess it's because people use some interesting IDs for their Instagram handle and Twitter handle. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. I'm just ant underscore Pruitt. I keep it simple. All right. But anyway, that is it. That is long exposure versus light painting. I plan on doing a long exposure lab like what we've done before with some other photography styles. It's a bit of a challenge trying to get everything set up and recording at night. But I think I'm finally there i think i've just about got it to where i can present it to you folks in a low light scene and show you how to create some cool long exposure shots and um get something that you can share up on your social media that a lot of people are going to enjoy because they're just so daggum cool all right okay so that is it for this this week's episode folks thanks so much for all of the continued support again if you have questions comments feedback feel free to shoot me an email. I do get to them eventually, <laughs> like Mr. Benedict did. So send an email to hop at twit.tv. Again, that's hop at twit.tv. I'd love to hear from you. Or feel free to give me a tag over on social media. On Twitter, I am ant underscore Pruitt. On Instagram, I am ant underscore Pruitt as well. Thank you all for the continued support. Now you all safely continue to create and dominate. And I'll catch you next time. Y'all take care. No ads, just the content. That's what you get when you join Club Twit. You even get extras like Twit Plus, our new bonus feed just for members, and exclusive access to the Club Twit Discord community. Join now for just $7 a month and support Twit as we continue to create top-notch podcasts you expect and deserve. I'm just getting started, so be one of the first to join as we build Club Twit from the ground up. You could be an early member. Go to twit.tv slash club twit to learn more and sign up now. Thanks. Thanks.